I'm going to show you yet more proof that conditional security is a Jesuit heresy. This, this belief you can lose your salvation comes from the Jesuits. It's a Jesuitical Catholic heresy. And it's funny because a lot of the street preachers, like Jesse Morel, Ruben Israel, Kerrigan Skelly, all these heretics, believe you can lose your salvation. So that they're getting it from the Jesuits. It's not a Christian doctrine. It's a Jesuit doctrine. As regards, this is from the Catholic Catechism, or no, not the Catholic Catechism, sorry, the Council of Trent. Sorry, Catholic Council of Trent, written by Jesuits, page 41. Uh, sorry, just had something in my throat. It says, as regards those who by sin have fallen from the received grace of justification, they may be justified, or again justified, when God, exciting them through the sacrament of penance, they shall have attained to the recovery by the merit of Christ, sorry, of the grace lost. For this manner of justification is of the fallen, the reparation which the Holy Fathers have aptly called the second plank after the shipwreck of grace lost. Right there. So you can lose your salvation, according to the Jesuits. And again, a lot of the street preachers believe the same thing. You can lose your salvation. It's a continual process of holiness and works and that kind of stuff. That's why I say that conditional security is a Jesuit. It's work salvation. Conditional security. Because it's basically it's putting salvation, taking it away from Jesus Christ, and putting it on you having to do this, having to do that, having to just do works to keep your salvation. So you're not working for your salvation, but you're working to keep your salvation. Still work salvation. Now I'm going to show you what the Bible says, because the Bible... Shows shows that you cannot you cannot lose your salvation for any reason. Uh, salvation is not yours; it's God's. Okay, and I'm gonna show you some scriptures proving that. First uh, Corinthians chapter one. I mean, there's so many verses I can go to. Here's just a couple of them. First Corinthians chapter one, verse seven, eight. So that we come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse eight. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're confirmed to the end. That's simple. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, verse 22, who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Uh, they're a good one to go to, talking about you being sealed. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And the other verse talks about you being sealed. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. You're sealed. Those three verses. And, of course, I saw some of the street preachers, they'll say, well, the seal can be can be broken. Okay, well, how does that line up with John chapter 10? Because if the seal can be broken, because they'll say the seal can be broken, well, here's how you answer them on that. John chapter 10, verses 28 to 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which given them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So we're in, we're in God's hand. So you can unseal yourself, but... God is the one, you're in God's hand. So how does that work? You're in God's hand, God's keeping you, but you can, you're can. you somehow better than God, you can unseal yourself. Huh? How does that work? And notice how Jesus Christ says, we will never perish. You know? So how can you unseal yourself? He says you're never going to perish. And again, God is sealing you, he keeps you sealed, but you can unseal yourself, so you're better than God somehow. You know? Insanity. Total insanity. Uh, John chapter... 5, verse 24. There's a lot of verses in the Gospel of John that prove eternal security as well. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John, chapter 6, verse 37. I think it's verse 37. I'm pretty sure it's verse 37. Unless I'm wrong. Oh, no, sorry, it was, uh, sorry, verse 39, sorry, not verse 37. And this is the Father's will with which hath sent me, all that all of that, or sorry, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. He won't lose us. We're kept by God. Another good verse on this. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. But apparently you can separate yourself, so you're somehow better than God. Just like how you can supposedly unseal yourself. So you're better than God, apparently. You know, this conditional security thing, it, it's uh, self-righteous. It takes you, it takes glory away from God. Uh, what was it? Here's, a, here's another verse that really makes a problem for these people. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. This is one that people kind of miss, though. But it's definitely a good verse proving eternal security. Because there are things in the, in the, the uh, writings of Peter that, that do apply for us today. you got to be careful, because... Uh, most because our doctrine for today should come from the book of John, which is transitional from under the law to under grace, to the uh, fi to Philemon. Hebrews is transitional from under grace to under the time of Jacob's trouble. But there is some stuff in the book of Peter, First and Second Peter, that is applicable for us today. This is one of them. First Peter chapter one verse three to five. Here's a verse these, these uh, self righteous Jesuits won't be able to handle. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Look at verse 5. Okay, all you Jesuits out there, look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. In the last time. You're kept by the power of God. A verse that ties into this. John chapter 17, another verse proving that we're kept by God. Verses, I think it's verse uh, 11 to 12. John chapter 17, verse 11 to 12. Another verse talking about how we're kept by God. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are. Hmm, they're one. They're not three different persons in heaven. Did a good uh, reputation of the pagan trinity. Uh, verse 12, while I, was while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that who that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Were kept, none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, which is not even saved. Uh, and one of the verses these Jesuits will like to twist is Galatians chapter 5. Sorry, Galatians chapter, is it verse 5? Verse 4, I believe. This is one of the verses that these, these self-righteous Jesuits and Catholics would like a twist. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. They'll say, see, you can fall from grace. Uh, that's not the context of Galatians 5, 4. The context is basically the Corinthians are trying to go back under the law. Look at verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that if he is a debitor, to, the, to, the, to do the whole law. So the context of this verse is they're trying to go back under the law, and Paul's saying if that's the case, then Christ is no effect unto you. That's why they're saying, you know, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. They're trying to go back under the law. So... so when Paul says you're fallen from grace, he's not saying they lost their salvation. He's saying if you're going back under the law, then Christ died for no reason, basically. And a verse that ties into this is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I believe it is. I am crucified, or sorry, it was, uh, was it verse 24? Sorry, it was, uh, verse 16, sorry. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ, of Christ Jesus, sorry, of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's simple. So, he was not saying you've fallen from grace as in you lost your salvation, but he's saying you're not justified by the law. They're trying to go back into the law. And another verse that ties into this is Galatians 2.21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? So, they were not losing their salvation, they are just trying to go back under the law. That's how these Jesuits will twist the scriptures. You know, typical of the Jesuits. 
but don't believe this heresy of conditional security. It is Jesuitical. It is Catholic. It comes from the Catholic Church. One of the many serious heresies that is work salvation. That's what it is. It's work salvation. Salvation is not about Jesus Christ. It's about you having to do stuff to keep yourself saved. So you're working for your own salvation. So don't be deceived by the Jesuits, the Jesuitical heresies. And there are going to be more heresies I'll be covering in this uh, Council of Trent. Um, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.